scripted raw hangout. Uh, this is Angelique Duffield from Bright Spark Media, and we are talking about using your Google Calendar. Um, lots of people don't know the total value that you can get and how synchronized Google Calendar is with all of your other things, including your YouTube uh, YouTube channel and Gmail, and of course Google Hangouts. So today we're going to be doing a little walkthrough of all the great features, and if you're not using Gmail and using the Google Calendar, you've got to start, and maybe this will tip you over the edge to start using it. So I've got a couple of guests today. I've got Elizabeth Densmore from Office to Office. She is an efficiency expert, and will be. Uh, she's actually the one who is interested in walking through some of this, and I said, hey, let's just do a live hangout and share it with everybody. So do you have anything you want to say about yourself, Elizabeth? Welcome to the show. Oh, uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm just getting used to this, this uh, amazing technology with you, Angelique, and, you know, the whole world is opening up, you know, to seeing all this with us. So thanks for inviting me to be part of your show here. Oh, you're very welcome. And I've got Gerfersid Green, who is a communications and uh, website and SEO expert. She's in um, in Ottawa and Canada, all the way across the, the country. So welcome to our show, and thank you for joining us. Do you want to say a word about yourself? Hi. Well, I'm sorry that, I, that I'm not going live on camera today because I'm having a lazy day at home and I haven't <laughs> taken a shower today. <laughs> and next time, hopefully, I will be a little bit more prepared. But I'm really, really excited to see what you're doing with Google+. Plus. I want to learn a little bit more about the platform and, of course, to learn about why you're here to use Google Calendar. I love using Google Calendar, and the more tips that I can learn about it, the better. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're just going to jump right in. And um, this whole Google Hangouts Live thing is still so new. So we were we took a little bit longer in uh, the back end in the green room figuring a few things out, and there's always changes and little glitches. So uh, um, that's the uh, the beauty of live you know, TV or radio or whatever it is. So um, totally unscripted and raw. Okay, so I'm going to do a screen share with you guys. And let me just pop that over. So I'll just show all of my desktop for you. And you'll see in just a second, and it's going to do this funky thing, that the psychedelic thing that it always does. Right, so here is my Google Calendar. Now, I love the fact that you can color code everything. Um, I'm a very visual person, so for me, I like to have things in different categories. So when you set up your calendar first, you can actually set it up from Google. So right here is my Google Plus account. And uh, right over here, I can go into my Gmail. I can go into YouTube and access everything from this, this um, navigation bar. So um, I've got my Google Hangout tab open over here. And this is how it pops up for you. And you can choose which calendars are viewed. And you can even share other people's calendars. You can see I've got another one here. This is for my style photography Gmail. And my, um, my husband's from Dreamer to Doer. He has a, a website, Nothing Great is Easy, so we keep track of what he's doing on his calendar. So you can add all sorts of other people's calendars. If you're um, collaborating in business, that's pretty useful. Uh, you can also add your tasks, so things that show up. Um, it's actually straight from my Gmail account, and I can you know tick off when I've completed tasks, and if I had anything set up for a certain date, then it would actually be showing up in this calendar too. And that's what I love about using Google products because everything is so integrated. You know, I can use this calendar on my smartphone. Um, I can view it and make changes to it and set alarms and reminders and things just like I can from my desktop or my laptop computer. Um, and like I said, I can access everything too just from my Gmail and then pop things into my calendar that way. And what's really great and what I'm really going to be talking about is using the scheduling feature if you're going to invite anybody, whether it's um, you know, a coffee date or like we did for a hangout or for any kind of meetings, people don't need to be using Google Calendar. They can be using any other calendar and you can invite people um, to just say yes or no and join you at a certain time. It will pop a schedule into their iCal or um, their Outlook calendar, and it's such a great feature. Oh, I had no idea that you could invite people who weren't using Google Calendar. I know. Isn't that That's great? great. <laughs> okay, so you can see, like I said, my calendar is full, and um, my default setting, you can see right here, is orange. So all of these, by default, are orange. 
And then for me, I've just picked a bunch of different colors. So for me, the turquoise means I've got a meeting like outside of home because, of course, I work for, for myself and I'm self-employed. I work at home. I just want to know when I actually need to make an appointment and leave the house. Purple for us is our um, personal social stuff. Um, green, this is my uh, Visual Marking Made Easy course, so it's just a, a different color reminder. And then right here you can see Canadian Holidays. That always shows up right at the top. And tomorrow is Remembrance Day, so that's just a little bit of a reminder. And um, you can change for the different views. So you can go by day, week, month. And you can see all the different things that I've had filled in. And it even has the different colors that I've selected for them. So the green and the turquoise and orange is just my standard color. So let's go back to week view. That's where I always save mine. And let's just set up, um, let's say I'm going to do, um, let's say I've just made up uh, an appointment time with Gerprasad and Elizabeth. So I could schedule it in here. You see it comes up in my standard color. And you can either just type in the event or you can go ahead and edit it right here. So I can create the event like that. So there's two ways. And I could either have edited it from where I was when I just created it or you can double click on it and it opens it up for you to edit whenever you come back to it because of course sometimes you make changes. So it shows you right here the date and the time. You can change these too. It even tells you how long it's for you so you don't need to figure it out in your head. Uh, you can change the colors here. So let's say it's a social event with these two lovely ladies. And here is the place where you can add guests. All you do is add in their email. So um, let me see. I'll just add Elizabeth from office to office. And you can see it's popped up right here. And it says right here, email guests. And you can choose these options too, whether you want to allow guests to modify the event, to invite other people, or to see the guest list. So when I'm setting um, a meeting, I tend to not let them invite others because it's you know our little meeting. Um, if it was um, a bit of a party, then yeah, you might want to have let them invite others. And modifying the event, um, since I'm the invitee, I usually do the, uh, the changes to the calendar. The other thing that I always do is set reminders. So I have my reminders set automatically to um, no reminders. And that is part of my settings for my calendar. So I can go back and show you that in a minute. So I have to actually add a reminder. So by default, it comes up with pop-ups for 10 minutes before. So when uh, no matter what you're doing, it's going to kind of pause it and pop up a little, um, you know, little pop-up box. But I also do another reminder as an email reminder, just in case people are, you know, on their cell phones or something like that. Um, it might be better access for them, and I do it one hour and also one day ahead, especially if we're scheduling something uh, maybe a week in advance and you want to make sure that they don't miss it. So you can change one day, one uh, minutes, hours, days, and weeks. So this will just send them an email reminder so you don't even have to remind people. If they've said, yes, they are attending, then it automatically sends out reminders for you. So that's another fantastic thing, too. You don't need to uh, send out emails like you did in the old days and remind people to come to the meeting. And right here it says, yes, no, maybe. So once I send it out, um, I will be a yes, and then it will just be awaiting um, Elizabeth's reply. So that's, um, that's the main features. Like I said, you can actually put where, and for me it would be from your computer or whatever you want to put. Are you going to send me the, the uh, um, invite right now so we can see what Yeah, yeah, like? I can do that. And um, the other thing I just wanted to point out is right here you can add a video call. So this is a Google video call. Um, it's not a live hangout, but um, it's not a broadcast hangout. That's what it means. But it's a, a video call, like you can do um, almost like a party line with um, whoever you've invited. So I really stress that if you're going to start doing video call meetings, a bit like you used to do in Skype, um, I would really suggest that you click on that because it gives an automatic link for people to click on. So both in their email and on their calendar, all they need to do is go to that link, click on it at the time, and everybody is in the same call. Because of course we've tried it different ways and sometimes people will go and um, you know, start a video call and then all of us have started three different ones and then it gets really confusing. So if you just have one person being the scheduler, add the video call, go back to it in your 
your email or on your calendar and just click the link and then that's perfect. So it's so much easier to, uh, to access it that way. Um, and the only other thing, uh, no, I think that's it. So I'll just save it. And it says, would you like to send invitations to guests? So I click yes. So now you can see it's a spot in my meeting and it shows the little timer. That means it's going to send out reminders. And that little person there means I've invited other people to the meeting. So now when I click on it, you can see I can join the video call right from my calendar. So if that was happening and we just, um, we will, we'd all scheduled our meeting and we've come in at the right time, all we would do is click that link and we'd be right into a video call together. Okay, so, so I, got the, I got the invitation and I'm going to click on it, okay, so that okay. Uh, we can see what that looks like. Okay, so go ahead. Look different in when you when I click on it when you open up the the link. Okay, so let's take a look. It should say. Okay. So Angelique so is I'm attended. Click on it right now. Okay. And I just clicked yes. All right. Oh. It says Google Calendar invitation cannot be forwarded by via email. This event belongs to. <laughs> A technical info. difficulty. If you are logged in as my office, please ask the meeting organizer to add you to the event. Okay. All right, so it's because you're logged in from a different one. So let me just, I can add guests as well. So okay. I'll click here and I'll invite you on your Gmail account. Um, okay. There we go. So you can see you can just keep adding different guests. So it's going to have two people named Elizabeth Densmore. And it says up here, yes, I am going. And you want to add a note or change your response. So if I wanted to, um, obviously, I'm the host, so I would probably be expected to be there, but you can change your response at any point in time. Maybe you decide that you can't make the meeting. It's when someone else has um, set it up. You can actually change your response. So have you got that now, Elizabeth? Yeah, but still, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. I got a new message. Okay. You okay? Did it show? Oh, we got it closed. Let me take a look. Okay. And there we go. There's two check marks. So Elizabeth is attending the meeting. Okay. So like I said, that's a pretty beautiful feature of, um, of using Google Calendar. And I think it's so great that it works right across any calendar platform. You don't need to be on Gmail and using Google Calendar. It sets it up with anybody's, um, anybody's email and anybody's calendar system. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you is that you can actually add some apps. So these things on the side um, are part of what's called Google Labs. And because I use my calendar quite a bit with people all around the world, I've actually set up a world clock. So that is um, uh, Google Labs right here. So you just click on this little wheel. And this is where you control all of your settings. When you're in Gmail or in Google+, um, or YouTube or anything, there's the little wheel for the settings. And in this case, I could change my settings if I wanted to. And that's where, like I said, you could change your default to not have reminders all the time because most of mine don't need reminders. You know, like, um, don't take any allergy medicine. I don't think I need to have a reminder for that. But uh, that's where you control your different settings. But labs is what we're looking for. And that's basically apps or applications. Some of, just in, some of them are just in beta testing, and other ones are fully functional. But you can see here's all the different ones that go with Google Calendar. You can do the same thing in your Gmail, and you can find all sorts of different apps that will help you do things. The one that I showed you on the side is World Clock. And I've just clicked Enable, so that's a, that's a really useful one. And Jump to Date, so if you don't want to have to scroll through your calendar, that gives you the feature to just go to a specific date. Maybe you know, six months in the future or um, six months in the past. And then the other thing that I've enabled is event attachments. So I can actually attach documents, spreadsheets, and presentations um, right into my Google Calendar. So that's the ones that I really recommend that you set up. Then you just need to remember to click Save and goes back and it would load it up for you. And so once where you is that again? Where I missed that. How do you get right to the app? Oh, right here. And then Labs. Okay. And once it's set up, then you can choose which countries or which time zones you want to see. So under settings, you can see it's checked off for Pacific time because that's my time zone. Um, and then it's either got time zones like mountain time, central time, or specific country. So um, one of my um, collaborators is in Belize. 
and Eastern Time, that's where Gurkhrasad is from. Um, so back in uh, like Ottawa, New York, Toronto, and we've got family and friends in London. So you can just go through and check off all the different places where you have contacts. And it will automatically, once you save it, it will uh, update that for you. So you just need to go back up to the top and hit save. And when it's a gray bar, that means it's nighttime, obviously. So I think that's a fantastic feature because especially if you're setting up events with other people, sometimes if you're in all different parts of the world, since we're such a global society now, it's hard to figure out what time zone they're in. So this, um, this just reminds you so you can set the time properly and schedule your meetings. So do you ladies have any other questions? I think that's great. Um, I loved finding out about uh, um, that I can invite people who aren't also in Google Calendar. I didn't know that, so that's awesome. Good. And, and the world clock, I, d I just put that in there. And, great, fantastic. Uh, and um, I went back into my settings, yeah, and I can see how, okay, I needed to add the um, video call. I didn't have that enabled, so I wouldn't have been able to right. have okay. that, so that was good to know. Cool. And how about you, Elizabeth? Do you have any questions, or did that cover pretty much everything? Well, it, you, you pointed out a couple of things I didn't know about, so I sent out another Im invitation because for a video call, right. it's going to be happening Monday evening. I didn't realize that I needed to click on that Okay. You know, as far as sending that out, right. so I realize that now. And the other thing I'm going to do is look at the lab that they have in calendars because just to see what there is because I just didn't think of looking at that at one time. Right. Awesome. So I'm glad that you learned there. something today too. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to wrap up our call. Um, thank you both, Elizabeth and Gurpraset, for attending today. And we've been just talking about how to use your Google Calendar and how effective it is for scheduling meetings and including things like scheduling Google Video Hangouts. So thank you so much for attending today. It's Angelique Duffield from Bright Spark Media.